Yo, 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 what's up, family? This is Omar Cook with 24-7 Live Culture, back with another edition of Culture Minute. We got some dope news today. We got my people with me. What's going on? You know what I'm saying? You know what it is. Donna Armstrong in the building. Your girl, Gentile Cherie. And we got some hot topics for you guys today. Our first one coming out the gate is the USA track and field team taking over the world championships in Budapest. Shakira Richardson got a gold medal in the 100 meter dash. She got a bronze in the 200 meter. And she also got a gold in the four by one meter relay. So, I mean, they definitely was doing their thing. No allows. He did a whole sweep too with the USA men's sprint. It was something to behold, I must say. Yeah, she did her thing for real. You know, um, really came out and silenced a lot of critics. There's been a lot of a lot of words thrown out her name over the past, you know, her past performances and, you know, how outspoken she is. But this time she really came out and really showed why she was one of the best in the world, if not, you know, the best, you know what I'm saying, uh, sprinter. Four by one championship and girls killed it as well, too. I mean, from lane nine to win it in the 100 is crazy, you know. Yeah. Usually expected between four and five and six, but she came through with the upset, you know, beat the Jamaicans. That's always tough to do. You know, and had Twitter going crazy, you know, obviously about who's who, you know what I'm saying? And, and, yeah. and shout out to Team USA for doing their thing. Yeah, um, Miss Richardson definitely, she is on fire right now, blazing the track. I mean, like you said, lane nine, like she just came out of nowhere smoking. I was like, ooh, wee. but I like how she's rebounded, you know what I'm saying? She's, uh, and I love how she's talking to nothing but black reporters i mean i love that because she's she's trying to pump out real content to her people and um i love that um hope she continues to thrive and just shut up the naysayers you know what i'm saying because everybody has a slip up and then she's rebounding excellent you know what i'm saying keep going miss richardson and uh noah Lyles. congratulations on you know your sweet too you know, young brother Yes, yes. And just like Shakari said, she's not back. She is better. So yeah, it was good to see. I can't wait to see what's going to come for the Olympics. Our next topic here, we have um, an NYC drug dealer receives a 10 year sentence in connection with the actor Michael K. Williams tragedy. If you guys don't know, Michael K. Williams is a phenomenal actor. Um, he got some drugs from a drug dealer and unfortunately he overdosed and right now the drug dealer is receiving a sentence. Yeah, I mean, his name is Irvin Cartanega, uh, Puerto Rico, 40, year old, 40 years old and he sold him, you know, obviously some fentanyl all his heroin and I mean, that was a tragic death, of course, of one of our beloved actors for sure. Um, but, you know, take out the actor title and he's just, you know, he's one of us, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, you know, that could have been our sister, brother, anyone, you know what I'm saying? And that's a sad reality that people are resulting to those types of drugs to obviously cope with certain feelings or certain thoughts. And, you know, you don't know what he was going through. So, you know, for him to have to meet his demise in that way, you know, it's sad. And... I'm glad to see that justice was served here because, you know, there's been a lot of people serving people poison forever. You know what I'm saying? You know, serving poison to the communities, serving poison to people that really don't need that, you know what I'm saying, to cope with, you know what I'm saying? They really need help and, um, you know, justice was served in this situation. Facts, I mean, I see in reports, he says he was sorry for his action when he sold the drugs and never attended for anyone to lose their life. I mean, me personally, I wouldn't sell drugs that could hurt people, damage people in life anyway, especially fentanyl, when you know that's a hot topic on the streets today. Like, why would you lay somebody drugs up with that? I mean, go back to um, Michael K. I mean, I don't know what he was going through. Like you said, uh, some people use different type of substances to cope with their lives. So I don't know what he was going through and he probably needed that specific substance i mean i wish he didn't um but unfortunately it led to his demise and um mr whatever his name is puerto rican he sh 
he should, uh, you know, definitely serve all the time. Because why would you do that anyway? To anyone, not just Michael, just to anyone. Because anyone could have been doing the drug that he was selling. Exactly. May Michael K. Williams rest in peace. We're going to take a quick little break and give a shout out to 24-7 Live Culture. We are back with Culture Minute. I don't know if you guys know the, this movie, but it was very popular back in the day called The Blind Side. Well, it was about a football player um, who was adopted by a white family. And from the movie with Sandra Bullock, who played the mother um, of Michael Orr's character, basically they're saying that Michael Orr never got any of the money that they made off the film. And now he's facing challenges how do you guys feel about that now hearing the truth? Yeah, Michael Orr, you know, he claimed that his the family deceived him into signing a document that granted them conservative conservatorship, providing them legal control over his business transactions. Um, obviously, the movie The Blind Side was a major, major film. It was on Netflix. Um, theaters, you know, we all remember yeah. the story and it had a and they secured over $300 million for themselves as in the deal. And Michael Orr didn't even receive none of that. So that's crazy to have a story about you and these people are profiting off of your name. And they're not even really your people like that, you know. So um, this is all coming to light right now. And I pray that he gets his due, his due justice. You know, he deserves obviously to get whatever money that they made off of the film returned to him. And have to find out that these people you know did you did you dirty like that is is heartbreaking you know um to have already been you know a foster child and come up in that type of way you know this is a that's a tough situation you don't have to deal with mentally and you know i'm glad that we're seeing the truth finally come to light though yeah of course of course um even when i was watching it back in 2009 like it was a great great movie i mean sandra bullock is a outstanding actor i know some people saying they should take back her oscar she didn't do that she Sorry. was portraying the role that the script said you know what i'm saying so big ups to sandra but miss Ann, leah ann and sean to tua i mean hopefully i'm saying the name correctly but they did some yeah mm -hmm. Tui, they did some illegal things like he was a foster kid, took advantage of him, and now he wants his he wants his earnings because Blindside was a major hit. When you think of Blindside, you think of Michael Orr. You don't mm -hmm. even think about the two the two. You don't even think about them. You think about Michael Orr. It's all about him. And to know he didn't receive nothing at all. I mean, why would you do that? But this is life. People do it all the time. And I hope people get their justice if this happened to him. Because, like I said, I remember watching this. Like, he went to Ole Miss. I'm from Mississippi. Like, I remember, like, seeing this. Like, oh, okay, this movie about him. I mean, it always seemed kind of fishy. But, you know, you don't want to say nothing until, like, facts come out, which they did. Um, and I hope he get his, his earnings. And I hope they get some time or something. Yeah, I hope he gets his earnings too. And another person, another football athlete, he was actually in the NFL um, Heisman Trophy winner, Reggie Bush. He's trying to get his Heisman Trophy back. Back in 2005, they took it away from him because they said that he received over $300,000 worth of gifts and prizes. And that was against the NCAA rules. But he said that they never had any evidence that he received those things. So I know um, back in 2021, when um, the NCAA started imp implementing the LIU rule, 
where athletes can now receive things for their appearances. Reggie tried to get his Heisman Trophy back, but the Heisman team, they came together and was like, we'll give it back to you, but the NCAA has to approve and they have yet to approve. So he just had held a press conference on like August 23rd, just basically saying this is defamation, which I think it is. He was the top player in the NFL, top player in his whole collegiate career. He deserves his trophy. He worked hard for it. Yeah, first off, you know, I just want to say that them taking the trophy off rip is preposterous. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if he got $10 billion while he was at USC playing. He deserved that. When you go to the, when you went to the games, you were seeing number five jerseys in the stands. Why can't he get none of that money? You know what I'm saying? If you go to, you know, you went to the games before they took the Heisman, you seen his big number five jersey in the back of the end zone. It's number five, the Heisman trophy, him. It was him. The games was all about him. The fans came to see Reggie Bush prime time. You know what I'm saying? So, and now that these kids are now able to make millions of dollars off of their names and be able to sign virtual contracts year to year basis and travel from school to school. I mean, it's, the fact that we're even talking about him getting his Heisman back is absolutely ridiculous because he wasn't the only one that was getting paid. You know what I'm saying? It's been going on for since the beginning of time. It's been going on since the beginning of time. Every 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 major D one school was paying somebody. Every every single one, and as they should. You know what I'm saying? Because the players are the ones making the absolute money. The NCAA is some crooks for that. You know they shady for that. For them to even have to go through an appeal for them to even try to. I mean, I mean for real. You know what I'm saying? Like this is this is getting out of hand at this point. At this point, you just write your wrongs and say, look, we saw Ari Bush. We know that you should have been had your Heisman. We messed up. Now we try to make it right. That's the only thing that should happen here. But obviously people are in positions of power and they're abusing it. And they want to keep this black man down and, and keep him there. Johnny Menzel had a whole documentary where he went on and talked about how he was doing the worst. You know what I'm saying? Or taking money or he wasn't even, I forget what the story was, but he wasn't even something. It was something, some lie. We know Manziel was getting paid while he's playing at Texas A&M. Yes. I mean, be for real. You know what I'm and saying? And he still got his Heisman. Still got his Heisman, still, of course. Still got you know what I'm saying? You know what it is. It's the, I'm not going to say the obvious, but it's time for Reggie Bush to have his Heisman back. My thing, my thing is, that I played college football. So, I say this from being in the NCAA. Like, they make billions off of athletes. Like you make billions off of player likeliness, you know what I'm saying? And we, at a time, we couldn't do nothing. Like you couldn't mm -hmm. even receive a snack. Like it was a point where you can get, you can receive a bagel, but you couldn't get the cream cheese with it. Like what type of rule is that? But like, like you said, when you went to USC, a game, you saw number five. You know what I'm saying? It was Reggie Bush show. You know what I'm saying? And trust me, the NCAA was making millions of dollars off of Reggie Bush's name from the commercials, from the game, because he, he was on the cover of NCAA. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Reggie Bush was, is an all-time generational great when it comes to college football. And you're telling me he couldn't make money off of himself, but you have an institution that's doing it. You know what I'm saying? So the game is kind of screwed up. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm happy the players are getting paid now because they should. I mean, you out there giving your all on the field and you going to school because I know people will be like, ah, oh, they get paid for school. Bro, do you know what a college athlete go through? Wake up 5 a.m. weights. Then you got practice. Then you got to go to study hall. Then you got to watch film and repeat and do it all over again. Like, it's like a full-time job and you don't get paid for your full-time job. You know what I'm saying? So... He definitely need his Heisman back. If Johnny Manziel, and I like Johnny Manziel, you know what I'm saying? I was definitely Johnny Manziel. But if he still have his Heisman, Reggie Bush should have his Heisman yesterday. And that's on period. So Kobe Bryant, his legacy is still going to continue, as we all know. But there was some big news. His wife, Vanessa Bryant, um, revealed that there's going to be a statue in front of the crypto arena starting February 8th, 2024. So everybody can continue to remember what an amazing basketball player, humanitarian, Oscar winner person Kobe Bryant was. 
Yeah, this is huge for the Bryan family. Um, something that, I mean, this is not something that's surprising, but uh, of course he deserves this to be amongst the greats. This is the seventh statue that will be outside of Crypto Arena. He'll be joining Elgin Baylor, Shaquille O'Neal, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson, Jerry West, and broadcaster Chick Hearn. You know, that obviously those guys are legends and Kobe did his thing for the Lakers his whole time during his career. And it's going to be fun to see the fans honor him on 2-8-2024, uh, you know, at 8-24, you know, a.m. So this is going to be uh, major, the significance of his numbers, uh, wearing 8 and 24. Um, the legend himself, you know, rest in peace, Kobe. And, you know, for me, I'm just glad to be able to have witnessed history, you know, being in L.A. and all the championships he won for us. And it's good to see him take his honor. Yeah, of course, you know, Mamba mentality. Kobe is a is a GOAT, you know what I'm saying? He was Laker basketball at a time. Like, you could not say the Lakers and not say Kobe Bryant. You couldn't say the NBA without saying Kobe Bryant. You know what I'm saying? Especially when he turned to the 20, first off, he was cold with the eight. Then he did the whole number change with the 24 just for his pops and went cra even crazier. You know what I'm saying? So this is one of the first, uh, he's going to have many ceremonies. This is just one of the first ceremonies he's going to have for the Lakers organization. Uh, Miss Bless said, um, of owner, you know, of the Lakers. But Kobe, you know, he, he, he impacted the game, just not on the court. But, you know, like I said, he, he won a, he won an Oscar. You know what I'm saying? He was doing major things. He was investing in different things. Kobe, you know, that's going to be a special moment. You know what I'm saying? I'm not from L.A., but I remember rooting against Kobe because I was a big AI fan. But I always respected Kobe being Bryant. You know what I'm saying? Especially with the little fro blow. He was blowing the blowing the fingers. Oh, yeah. he Just too many memories. I'm just happy um, that they are doing it. I'm just sad that he won't be able to see it himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. But they're... Um... They're giving also flowers to Michael B. Jordan and Oprah Winfrey at the annual Academy Museum Gala, despite the WGA and SAC after strike. Because, you know, you could, they're only limiting so much promotion. But on October 14th, they will be receiving um, their flowers, which is good because, as you know, Michael B. Jordan just received his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And Oprah is just, I mean, she's the most successful Black woman in history. Started out in the news, ended up, um, you know, getting fired. And then she just skyrocketed. She was also Miss Black Tennessee. Yeah, shout out to Oprah and shout out to Michael B um, for being able to get honored, even while the SAG strike is going on. You know, obviously the SAG strike has been kind of a daunting thing that's been over the heads of Hollywood. And to still be able to get some rewards and be um acknowledged in the community for their work you know is, is tremendous and you know obviously michael had the new movie creed 3 that he just directed and starred in so um he deserves his flowers he deserves to get you know whatever whatever it is that they will um continue to give him you know what i'm saying in the future you know what i'm saying he's been a staple in hollywood for a long time even since the days of him playing wallace in the wire you know so um it's really dope to see him growing into one of Hollywood's biggest stars. Yeah, Michael B. Jordan, he's a, you know, he's a fan favorite. I remember first watching him in The Wire. Uh, you know, he's a, you know, great actor. Uh, I think he's a great dude, you know what I'm saying? He's he's about his business. Um, Oprah, you know, that's Oprah, you know what I'm saying? You know, Sippy Land, you know, she was in uh, Color Purple, you know what I'm saying? So she's a legend herself. Like you said, she got fired. But she reinvented herself and you see what she's doing today. You know what I'm saying? Have to own her own show. You know what I'm saying? First off, this is how powerful she was. If she had a show in the Chicago Bulls in the playoff game now, if they if, if the shows lined up, the game lined up the same day, they would have flipped the Chicago Bulls game for her show. You know what I'm saying? That's how impactful she is. Like she gives back to the community, Africa, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, so much respect to Oprah and Michael B. Continue to thrive and be great. Yes, yes. And that was our Culture Minute. Thank you for tuning in with us. Tap in with y'all soon. Tap in.